Hi everyone, in this video of Accelerated Chess Dragon, we're going to be looking at another chess opening, and this is the Alakine defense. So without further ado, let's look at this opening. White starts off by playing the move e4, and black plays knight f6. Uh, we have e5 by white, knight b5 by black, uh, d4, and now d6. And after c4, knight b6, this is the chase variation of the Alakine's defense, and more often than not, it's played on the top level. So... E takes d6 by white, c takes d6 is one move here, and the second move is e takes d6. We're first going to be looking at e takes d6, and if this move is played, then knight c3 by white, bishop e7, bishop d3 by white, uh, just developing. And here black has two moves, castles and knight c6. If knight c6 is played, then after knight g2 defending the d4 pawn, bishop g4 by black, um, now the obvious threat is knight takes d4, because the knight on e2 is pinned. So f3, bishop h5, and now white castles, uh, bishop g6, a trade of bishops. And here the h file is opened up, but that's not really the biggest of white's concerns. Uh, white plays b3, just defends the c4 pawn. Bishop f6 by black, and now knight to e4 by white. And here, after knight e4 is played, uh, a sample variation that could happen is after d5. Uh, we have captures on f6 with check, queen captures, c5, um, just attacking the knight on d6. The knight goes to c8, bishop to f4, king to d7, and now queen to d2. And the idea is that in both players, attacking on opposite sides is going to give some very dynamic play in this opening. So that was the move, uh, knight to c6. The other option is actually just to play castles, and after this move is played, knight g2, knight c6, castles. Similar variation, uh, knight f4, bishop g6, the knight is traded off. And now d5, uh, saving the pawn from the attack of this knight on c6, knight e5, and now f4. And here, uh, this may seem a bit strange, but uh, black cannot actually capture the c4 pawn. It's really a trap, because if you capture this pawn, then after queen to b3, attacking this knight on c4, the knight would have to go back to a5, but now after queen to b5, there is no way to defend this knight on a5. Uh, best would be having to play this move knight c4, uh, and after bishop takes c4, knight takes c4, queen takes c4, white is up a knight and he's easily winning this game. So, uh, knight e takes c4 is out of the question, instead knight takes d3, queen takes d3, and after bishop f6, bishop d2, uh, the knight goes to d7, and the plan of knight d7 is just to try bring the knight to c5, and from there, uh, perhaps even push a5 and prevent the idea of b4. And black's position would definitely gain a lot of initiative, and black would be perhaps slightly better than white, but nothing out of the ordinary. Uh, white plays rook ae1, black plays knight c5, queen f3, a5, and after f5 is played, white is preparing an attack on the king side, and black must just try whatever he can to either defend or just prove to white that the attack is not really going to mean anything for him. So that was the move e takes d6, and the main move c takes d6 is next. And after this move is played, white plays knight c3, black goes g6, bishop e3 by white, bishop g7 by black, rook c1 by white, and now castles by black. b3, and now e5 is one move here. Uh, this is the main move, the other two moves include knight c6 and f5, uh, and we're first going to be looking at f5. If f5 is played, then g3 by white, getting ready to fee and shadow the bishop. e5, d takes e5, d takes e5, queen takes d8, rook takes d8, and now c5. And here, black plays f4. And even though after f4, white would be able to win a pawn, uh, it wouldn't necessarily be the best position. For instance, g takes f4, e takes f4, bishop takes f4, bishop takes c3 check. And this is the reason why the position doesn't get too good. After knight d5, bishop to c4, bishop to e6, uh, blocking the threat towards the king. Uh, even if you defend with rook f3, uh, after knight takes f4, rook takes f4, bishop c4, rook c4, uh, knight c6, black has more pieces developed than white, and black's position would definitely be better. Uh, white, uh, even though he's up a pawn, look at the pawn structure that he has. Uh, white has three pawn islands, black has only two, even though black's down a pawn, and black would definitely be better in this variation. So gf4 is not a move to consider, instead bishop d2 by white. 
Uh, knight 6 to d7. Check on c4. King h8. And now knight to e4. And if we look at the position from a glance, um, we would say maybe that white is better. Uh, he has more pieces developed. And uh, the threat of knight d6 is a, a big one. And it's really hard to see how you can evade all of these threats as black. The other move to be played is knight c6. And after this move is played, uh, d5 by white, knight e5 by black, bishop e2, and now black has two moves, e6 and f5. If f5 is played, then white will play f4, and now black plays knight g4, uh, and we have a trade of minor pieces on the g4 square. Knight g2, knight d7, white castles, knight f6 by black, and now knight d4. And Black's idea is to just try defending the g4 pawn and making sure that white doesn't manage to uh, capture it and with that also get a strong attack. And white's idea is to find a way to utilize one of Black's weaknesses, like maybe the e6 square uh, or the uh, a severe need to protect the g4 pawn. And white also might get ideas like pushing f5 and that would... Uh, also get some weaknesses in black's camp. So uh, white would definitely be better in this variation. Uh, the other option is to play e6, and after this move is played, then f4, knight e7, d6. And here, uh, the most craziest variation that you're going to see. Queen e7. And this is actually still part of theory, um, but even after this position is played, black prevents the idea of either e takes d7 or e takes f7 check. Uh, knight f3 is played here by white. If you play e takes f7 check, then after rook takes f7, uh, even though white is up material, it's not the best scenario to be up material in, because white hasn't castled yet, black has a castled king, and uh, black's threats towards white's king side are very strong, and white does not want to see this. You can also not capture on d7, because after queen takes e3, uh, you might be wondering why doesn't white just capture on c8, and that's because after bishop c3 check, uh, let's say king f1, rook takes c8 and uh, black has managed to get rid of a very strong piece. And after say something like knight f3, uh, we could perhaps say the bishop goes back to g7. And black has managed to castle, white's king is still stuck in the center, and white would not be uh, favored in this position. So ed7 or ef7, both of those moves don't work. So white plays knight f3. And here, black could capture on e6, but black decides to play knight c5. And here, white plays the move f5. And this f5 move is just trying to get a very weak position for black, mainly to try weakening the king side, uh, forcing black to take, and then maybe uh, playing against black's weak pawns. So g f5, and now e f7 check. Uh, you might be wondering in this variation, why don't you just capture the pawn immediately? And it's because a similar reason to why you couldn't capture it uh, maybe in this variation. So f5, um, this is a very interesting move, which just sacrifices uh, a pawn. It gives up the material back, but after g f5, e f7 check, rook f7, bishop g5, queen e8, and knight b5, white's attack is definitely way better than black's. Uh, white's threatening the d6 pawn, and black, uh, even though he's castled, he has to be very careful about what he plays and uh, at what timing he plays it at. So that was the move knight to c6. Uh, the other move that can be played is e5, and after this move is played, white takes, black takes, and now queen d8. Rook d8, c5, and now knight 6 to d7. Uh, if you play knight to d5, then this would allow moves like rook d1, and after bishop to e6, bishop c4 by white, and this knight's pinned, you must either give up the exchange or give up this piece, because black is completely lost here. So, that is why knight 67, bishop c4, knight c6, knight f3, uh, just normal development, and here black has three moves to choose from. Knight d4, knight a5, and h6. If h6 is played, then knight e4 by white, knight a5, bishop d5, knight f6, uh, trade on f6, and after rook d1, white could be considered slightly better, because white has a very nice space advantage, and with the two bishops controlling most of the position, uh, it doesn't really seem very easy for black to play this position. Uh, the other option is to play knight a5, but after this, then bishop e2 by white, h6, knight b5, knight f8, and now instead of bringing the knight to d6 immediately, uh, white 
brings his rook to d1, and not only then will play the knight to d6, because uh, the d6 square needs to have utmost protection. So after rook fd1, uh, white is going to get ready to play knight to d6. Um, if the rook trades on d1, then white's just going to capture with the rook, and the knight will still land on d6 no matter what you do. And the final move is actually knight d4, and after this move is played, you don't trade. Um, you instead play knight g5, attacking the f7 pawn. Rook f8, knight e4, uh, maybe trying to bring the knight to d6 and pressure the f7 pawn that way. Also just trying to defend the c5 pawn. Knight f5, um, trying to defend the d6 square. g4, and now black takes on e3, white takes on e3, knight f6, and here we have h3, defending the pawn on g4. Knight takes e4, knight takes e4, and after bishop e6, uh, bishop takes e6 by white, f takes e6 by black, and here white plays king to e2. And black has absolutely no way of playing the position anymore. Uh, his pieces are completely tied up. This bishop on g7 cannot really enter the game that easily. Uh, white's knight is basically unopposed. Uh, this bishop cannot oppose the knight. And if you wanted to oppose it with either of these rooks, you'd have to sacrifice the exchange. And black uh, simply has no way of getting rid of that knight on e4. And the knight on e4 is just one of black's problems. The other problem is that white has a complete control over the d and f files, and black has no say in it. So white would be way better in this scenario, and it would be only a matter of time before black resigns the game. So after this king to e2 move, that is the end of the variation, and I hope you all enjoyed the video, and if you have any suggestions or feedback for me, please let me know in the comment section, and stay tuned for more chess.